right, good people, good morning. Welcome to a, a Monday morning edition of Morning Scone, presented by Boudreaux's Bloody Mary Mix, Margarita Mix. Get y'all some as you start a Monday here. Um, a lot we'll get to, as y'all know, as you, some of you may know, uh, Mondays, we got the uh, Monday morning meeting at Guarantee at uh, 9 a.m. downtown Baton Rouge. So, Robert, Drew's fired up. Or, Robert's back at it. Calakai! So Drew has rediscovered his love for Robert and Calakai. Dad, dad, home. Dad, dad is home. You're right. Hey, look, we're doing morning scone. Let's say hi to everybody. You ready? Hey, guess what, Drew? This morning, we're celebrating. Because today, Drew Brees gets to break the all-time career passing yard record on Monday Night Football. Love Monday Night Football, man. Golly, I love Monday Night Football. Let's say some good mornings to everybody. Guys. Val, Danny, good morning. Guys. What? Guys. Are you saying Cayenne? Sounds like you said Cayenne. Derek Thomas, Greg Lane, Trey Warren, Trivia Carter, good morning, everybody. Hope y'all doing fantastic today. Uh, Leroy Blanchard, good morning. This won't scroll now. Come on, man. Come on, man. There we go. Uh, let's see. Robert Lassane. Hey, Aunt Sharon. Good morning. Scott Bork. Charlie Cavell. Josh Long. Good to see everybody. Derek, did Drew enjoy the game? On on Friday, I got to take him out to the Catholic High game. He did pretty well, man. Um, uh, we left after halftime, after the halftime interview, but he, he, did, he did pretty well. Whenever... When there would be like a big play and like people would like erupt and cheer, he got a little freaked out with that. But he did he did pretty good. Uh, ben Clark, Santa Maha, not this weekend, dog. Uh, John Miller, Jason Hatcher, good morning. Daniel, Justin, good to see everybody. Uh, Mikel, good morning. Steve Menard, and Mary, good morning. Let's see, do, 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 do. Matthew Shelley. We found a running offense beat Auburn, so I'm happy. Uh, oh, you talk about Mississippi State. I told you, man, Mississippi State's tough, man. Um, ain't no shame in losing to Kentucky. Uh, but but what you also saw this weekend is that A&M is legit, too. At least their run defense is legit, too. So, I mean, LSU's got a, got an uphill climb. There's no doubt, man. That the, the schedule is, is what we all thought it would be. It's a tough schedule. So, they'll win some, they'll lose some. Hey, we're doing morning scone. Can you say morning Go! I gotta hit the share button too. But are you singing? I think he sees me play my guitar and sing. I think he's singing. Like it's just babbling, but I think he's singing. Very good, Drew. That's so beautiful. Dada home. Dada home. Dada is home. What do you want? You want to sit on Dada's lap? Come sit up here with me. What? 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 Hey, we're gonna use our words. Listen, we use our words. Okay, go watch Robert. Go watch Robert. Go watch Robert. We'll see you later. Go see Robert. Sam, Craig, Brandon, uh, Chris, good morning. <laughs> Craig said Matt was some bounce this morning. Hey, Craig, compared to yesterday, yesterday was rough, man. Worked all day Saturday. Had, went to a birthday party for a friend. 60th birthday party. Out. Scone. Sick? I don't know what you're saying, baby. Sup. Sup? What does Roro tell you? One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Uh, yesterday was rough, man. I could lie to you. Uh, <clears throat> I was up till like one thirty, and then he got me up at five thirty. So I slept for maybe four hours. Um, did a little booze on Saturday night, as you might imagine, post game, and we're at a party. So yesterday was a little bit of a grind. So happens. Um, Sam, we need to review the game video. I think Mullen was sneaking Tebow in at some critical moments. No way that was flippy. Um, so, we've talked a ton about Florida. I guess today will be the last day we talk about the Florida game because we'll do some on AFR today as well. Uh, I was thinking about it. You know, of course, you all know I picked Florida. And in part, the reason was, of course, good, good athletes. I think athletically, the teams are, are what and what. 
Um, a lot of the same strengths, a lot of the same deficiencies. Florida had the home field advantage. But I also like Dan Mullen as a play caller, and I like Todd Grantham as a defensive coordinator. Like, we talked about Todd Grantham all last week. If you watch this, if you listen to AFR, I talked about Todd Grantham all last week because even though LSU beat uh, Louisville two years ago, he gave Danny Etling fits. Talked about it last year before the Mississippi State game. Grantham gave Etling fits, and LSU's offense last year put up seven points in that game at, in Starkville. And then the other day, you just saw it again, man. Dude dialed up pressure, and five sacks, 11 tackles for loss, eight quarterback hurries. It just, that's what he does. He And the question was, when Burrow was under that much duress, could he play a clean game? And he didn't. Joe turned it over three times. Once in the red zone, uh, once that led directly to a touchdown for Florida with the pick six, and then once when you're trying to drive to, to potentially you know, tie the game. You just... That's what pressure does, man. Pressure bust pipes, and the, and he did it on uh, on Saturday. Uh, like, and then with Felipe, a lot of that was just Dan Mullen scheming for him. I mean, Felipe's not an option quarterback, but Dan Mullen kept prod and he found the the, the soft spot, uh, the the throwback pass with the left handed kid. That's scheming. That's film and recognizing a tendency and exploiting it. It's it's things like that where he just he's a Dan Mullen's a great play caller, man. He just. He's a very, very good offensive play caller. Um, Jason's talking about missed holding calls. Jason, I, I want to hear nothing about it. Stop it. Florida had 11 penalties against them. LSU had eight. There were more penalties against Florida than against LSU. There was a play on the sideline where it would have put Florida in field goal range. They overturned the call, which was kind of suspect on that catch. Come on, man. Like... LSU got bailed out at the end of the game with the offsetting on sportsman likes, which should have just been on Kerry Vincent, but instead they called him offsetting. That would have ended the game because LSU didn't have enough timeouts to stop the clock. I mean, do not come at me with ref. Like, there's nothing. I mean, you remember when I used to go off? I used to go off on, on some of the nonsense about, like, the receivers at the beginning of the season. Like, you want to set me off? Start talking to me about officials. Don't ruin my Monday morning coming here talking about the refs cost you a game. Losers blame refs for losing a game. You got 60 minutes. You know, I got an idea. Don't give up 200 rushing yards to Jordan Scarlett. Maybe that'll help. Get you a defensive line rotation. How about this? How about your left tackle who's supposed to be all SEC? How about he blocks Ja'Kai Polite and doesn't get... Uh, Joe Burrow kill. How about that? how about Joe Burrow when he's being pressured? Don't fumble the ball in the red zone. Don't come into this crowd. Oh, the holding calls. Get out of here with holding calls. It's nonsense, dude. I'm sick of that crap. Losers blame officials. You you never see a winning team ever blame refs ever. It's such a it's a scapegoat loser mentality to say, well, it's the refs' fault. No, it's not the refs' fault. Be better. Sorry, not sorry. I'm actually not sorry. Uh, Daniel Gidry, what up from the sunny Galveston, Texas? Nice. Danny Higgins is with you. Dude, tell Danny Higgins I said what's up. Danny Higgins, le- de- leadoff hitter as a designated hitter in the 97 National Championship game against Alabama, and Danny Higgins went yard. Set the tone for that 13-6 to win. The skipper's fifth. Duh. The skipper's Duh. fourth. Duh, duh. Duh. Hey, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Da da home. Da da home. What you coughing for, bud? And sneezing. Danny Higgins. <laughs> oh, man. It's like the ghost of LSU baseball pass on here, man. Got Joey Painich watching. Nate Bumstead. Danny Higgins. Whoop. Hey, look, you're caught up in this wire, bud. That's not a good thing. That was good balance, though. Good job getting out of that. I'm proud of you for that. That's really good. Um. All right, let's 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 get on y'all's comments. Um, please don't trip over that wire. Okay, thank you. Blake Middleton, good morning. Uh, Dale Mullins had her number for a while. Sort of, I mean, LSU's record against Dan Mullen is like, well, he won the other day. So he, but when he was in Starkville, he was like, he only won twice. So he would have been two and seven. I mean, LSU dominated the series. But starting with State's win in 14, one in 14, he was a field goal away from winning in 16. He had a field goal at the gun to win in 16, and then they won in 17. So they were 2-2 two and two in his last four. Uh, but he really should have been 3-1 and one if the kid makes the field goal in 16. But anyway. Uh, Charlie said LSU isn't getting pressure with the front three and four. That's 100% a big problem, for sure. 
And Ed's mentioned it every week, but again, it's one of those things that you ignore whenever, whenever you're winning. And the reality is, Rashard Lawrence, Braden Fajoko, Glenn Logan, Ed Alexander, Neil Farrell, that's your five-man rotation. They've just not been very good. Uh, and I got into this conversation with T-Bob on the pregame show you know, about, say, like Braden Fajoko. And, you know, he's a big, strong kid. Going into this game, Braden Fajoko had 11 tackles. Um, and I'm not trying to, like, call the kid out for not to be, but, like, the flip side of it is, and he was saying, T-Bob was saying, well, it's hard to generate stats as a nose tackle. In a sense, that's true, but Greg Gilmore last year led your team in sacks as a nose tackle. The difference is Greg Gilmore was a fifth-year senior. Kristen Lockature was a fifth-year senior. Frank Heron was a fifth-year senior. You had three guys in the defensive line that were 23 years old that had been in the college strength and conditioning program for five years. And I talked about this this offseason. Like, it's not easy to replace those guys and their experience. And you're kind of seeing that a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, it, the defense might be wholly different if you had Caleb on Chasson, but you don't. So someone's got someone just got to be better. Uh, let's see. Hey, Libby Davis Morell, good to see you. Kyle Gallo, that lefty was a pitcher with a mid-'90s fastball. Oh, really? The guy from Florida? Uh, Trey Dykes, Jason Meigs, Mark Capone, good morning. John said the first drive was way too easy downhill from there. They went tempo. Just can't go tempo the whole game, especially when your defense is struggling like LSU's was. Uh, Jason Hatcher drinks top shelf whiskey with Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, man. Val, what a way to come back to Matt going off. Did someone put good bourbon over Diet Coke again? <laughs> Y'all know me too well. Uh, Darren Pellegrin, what's up, dude? Boudreaux's Bloody Mary Mix Margarita Mix. Go buy some. Boudreaux'sMix.com. Uh, somehow there's always trolling aspect of the LSU Florida game. They beat us and are still behind us in the polls. That that is insane. The fact that you have two teams with the same record, Florida beat LSU and they're ranked by. I, I hate polls. I just hate polls. Uh, Charlie Cavell, Tiger Anthem kills the Tigers. He has the last three years. Uh, Lance, are you sticking with seven and five? Um, well, no, because. They won one of the games I thought they'd lost. They'd lose, which is Auburn, and so I think for seven and five to happen, well, is it plausible? Yes, I don't think they lose each of the next two. I think they they lose this week to Georgia and probably beat Mississippi State. Now, if they lose to Georgia and State, then yes, seven and five is very plausible um, because. You would have lost three straight. I don't think you're beating Bama. That's four. And then you have to go to A&M, which, as you just saw, is not an easy place to play. And A&M, is, their defense is much improved. They, they just are. And they got a great running back in Travion Williams. And you saw this weekend, like, LSU st- struggles to stop power running games, which may be a problem against Mississippi State, too. Um, but, no, just like LSU won at Auburn, I think LSU is going to win one of these next two. Uh, the LSU's got great athletes. They're going to be at home. People are going to be excited. Uh, LSU has a great defensive coordinator. I think they'll, they'll they'll win one of the next two. I think they'll lose this week. I think they'll beat State. Uh, but if they lose to State, then seven and five is very much in play. Jerry DeLucky, Brandon Ray, good morning, Justin Robinson, Randy Quinn, how y'all doing? Uh, Akeem Williams, did Trevez more play? He did. Uh, he wears forty nine. He came off the edge a few times, like like third down pass rush situations, like situational pass rush. But I I don't think he recorded a stat. So he did play, but I don't think he recorded a stat. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Uh, Devin Kelly, good morning. Uh, let's see. Michael Moscone, what's up, cuz? Uh, Kyle Gallo. <laughs> can't cry, jeez. Uh, let's see. Jerry, can't wait to get in the dome tonight. Tonight's going to be great, man. Um, Drew Brees gets to break uh, career passing yardage mark. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. I, and you know the other thing? I Maybe this is just a product of growing up a Saints fan and them sucking for so many years is... When I get to watch the Saints on Monday Night Football, it just feels special. Because uh, that I remember they played, I was a kid, they played the 49ers in maybe 93. And people got hyped. I, I think it was 93. Um, and... People got so excited because it was the first time the Saints 
had been on Monday Night Football. No, nah, that's not what I want. Dog on it. I can't find it. I, I'm going to look it up and prep it for today's show, so I'll have it today. But anyway, Saints hadn't been on Monday Night Football in years. They were like they were having a great season. I think it might have been '93. Um, and let me see if we do this by team. Anyway, see, of course, I'm trying to do this. There it is. There it is. It was '93, November twenty second, nineteen ninety three. The Niners won forty two to seven. I remember we got so hyped for that because the Saints were finally back on Monday Night Football. They're playing the Niners. Saints were having a good year. They went to Candlestick and they lost forty two to seven. Yep. That was it. So anyway, point is, man, the Saints have just not look in in their history. They haven't been on Monday Night Football a ton. Now, obviously, in the last decade, more so, you got more primetime games because the Saints have been good and relevant and all that. But still, I just I don't take those for granted, man. I love getting to watch, I love getting to come home on, after working on Monday, and I always watch Monday Night Football anyway. I've always been a Monday Night Football guy. Um, like in college and shortly after being a group of friends, we'd always get together on Monday at somebody's house and watch Monday Night Football. I mean, it's, I, I, I love, I mean, I love the, the TV product of Monday Night Football. So um, when the Saints are on it, it always feels special. So the fact that they're on it tonight and Bree's going to break the record, I, I think it's very, very cool. Uh, Michael Moscona needs serious help on the O line. Uh, yeah, and you're not going to get it. Um, so you got to get these guys better, or you know, limit your your play calling options by by chipping a back, by adding a tight end, which they did a lot this past weekend. But y'all just got to understand, man. Personnel wise, what Florida had coupled with their defensive coordinator, they they're gonna be tough uh, this week with Georgia. Kirby Smart, Mel Tucker, that's gonna be really tough too with Georgia's athletes. Um, different challenge. Uh, state is more like Auburn. Um, you just worry about them getting pushed and controlling the line of scrimmage. It's not necessarily like speed rushing you off the edge like Ja'Kai Polite did. So different, just different challenges. But state is state is more like Auburn. And now Montez Sweat, he's a speed rusher from state. Jeffrey Simmons, big old dude. You know, anyway. Kyle, I hope Drew throws four touchdowns to get to 500 also. That would be cool. Um, I know Brady did it on Thursday. It'd be really cool to see Breeze do it again same week. Hey, Mark, good morning. Um, Trey Dykes, Dion went off. The Monday Night Football game. Ugh. EJ, hey, Matt, I think we can beat Georgia. Call me crazy, but the games we should lose are the ones we usually win. Um, I can't... I, can LSU beat Georgia? Can LSU can beat Georgia. LSU was a 10-point road dog at Auburn and won the game. They're 8.5-point underdogs against Georgia. Robert, they're 8.5-point underdogs against Georgia. Like, can they win? Sure. Georgia has had some inconsistency at quarterback. Um, you know, Fromm's been a little inconsistent. They played Justin Fields a bit more. Uh, but I just think their skill guys are are probably better than Florida's. Running backs may be on par. I DeAndre Swift is probably a little bit better than anybody that Florida has, but Elijah Holyfield is is similar to uh, to LaMichael P. Ryan. You know, kind of a smaller stock here back. Um, you know. I just had an idea. LSU Georgia. Elijah Holyfield is a running back. The son of Evander, the real deal of Holyfield. I got an idea for Friday's guest picker. Mm. What if we can make that happen? I've interviewed uh, Holyfield once. It was in my news radio days at WIBR. This would have been 04 or 405, somewhere in there. Evander, the real deal, holy feel. That would be massive, man. God, that'd be huge. Get it. The real deal in studio, that'd be huge. We'll work on it this week. 
Uh, David Jenkins, LSU will upset Georgia. Book it. Looking forward to Saints tonight, though. Hope you're right. James Roy, what's up, Dad? Uh, LSU wide receivers can't catch. Need to fix that Saturday. They've just been inconsistent. Um, you know, the game-winning drive against Auburn, they were awesome. But D. Anderson high-pointed that ball on the sideline. Stephon Sullivan had the catch on the 4th uh, and 10. Derek Dillon had the, the, the slant that he took 71 yards. I think mostly Justin Jefferson's been awesome this year. Uh, but, yeah, they, they, they struggle with drops and drops in big moments on Saturday. <clears throat> uh, David Raider, I still feel that Breeze is underrated. Dome should be lit tonight. You know, David, I was thinking about that last night because there was a co- I think Jeff Duncan might have written the column for NOLA, uh, which basically says that Breeze is the most underrated athlete of his generation. And maybe that's true, but at the same time, like, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, he's getting all the fanfare for this record tonight. I, I just don't know, like... When you're when you're a a universally understood first ballot Hall of Famer and you're getting all this fanfare and you're breaking records, like what more could you can't call him the greatest of all time because Brady and Montana and like they got the Super Bowls, uh, you know, and like Bradshaw played in a different era. He's got four Super Bowls, but he also had a team chock full of Hall of Famers. I, I'm not trying to diminish. He still got to won four Super Bowls, but. You know what I mean? It's like that's that's the thing that's missing off of Drew's resume is he had a bunch of seven and nine seasons, and Brady never had those. You know, Brady just keeps going to Super Bowls. So I don't know how it's a, it's a good question. Maybe there's some validity to it, but I think largely people consider Drew Brees one of the five or six best quarterbacks in the history of the game. I, yeah, I mean. When you get through the the Brady, Manning, Favre, Montana, you know, I think then you go into like the Rodgers, Breeze, you know, go into the like Bradshaw. You turn back the clock a little bit. Some of the older quarterbacks. I mean, that right? Maybe, maybe that's a good conversation. Maybe it's really good. Maybe I'll have a conversation. Get somebody's perspective on that. Hey, Jeannie, darling, Kyle Rosenbach. Good morning, Rosenbach. Uh, let's see, Jacob Hawks. With a record of eight and four, that sends LSU to Nashville or Charlotte. Probably not. Remember, uh, the the league, the SEC now works with the Bulls to place teams. So it is highly unlikely LSU will ever go to Charlotte because LSU fans just aren't going to travel to to Charlotte for a bowl game, for a mid level bowl game. Um, I can't see them going back to the Citrus Bowl for the third straight year. So that would so. You'd be looking at something like, is Outback in play? LSU did not travel well to the Outback. That's why the Outback tends to prefer an East team or Auburn. Um, uh, Gator, but I thought Gator would have taken LSU at times in the past and haven't. Robert. Did he win? Robert. Daddy, daddy. Is Robert done? Did he win already? Oh, okay, you ready for more Robert? Okay, let's see him again. Let's see Robert win again. Big old nerd. Big nerd. Robert, but he won. Good on Robert for winning all that money. Um, so Jacob, just in your scenario, like at the beginning of the season, I picked the Texas Bowl. I don't think they're going back to Citrus. LSU didn't travel well to Outback, so they probably wouldn't want him there. Gator, for whatever reason, hasn't really want seem that seemed to work. But at Texas geographically is right there, which seems to make the most most sense. You know, LSU's fan base in Houston. They want attendance at these games. It's I know we have perception of certain bowl games, but um but again that's playing out your scenario. Maybe they go nine and three, maybe they go ten and two. I mean we'll see. Let's let's see what they do this weekend. But I I don't think Nashville or Charlotte would, would be the destination. Um Mark, LSU fans better not leave at halftime. The only way they'll leave at halftime, Mark, is if it's a it's a blowout, but I don't think that's going to happen. Brandon Kelly, good morning, dude. Um, David Jenkins, eight and four last year, had them in Orlando. They were not eight and four last year. They were nine and three last year, and then lost the bowl game, finished nine and four. Um, bless you, bless you, <laughs> Kelly. Hi. Uh, let's see. Time for DBs to live up to their reputation. I'd agree with that, Sam. I think uh, I think Greedy's played exceptionally well. The one ball he gave he gave up was that play the kid made with Greedy and Delpit all over top of him, and he still came down with the catch. It was great. What? 
I love you. I'm, I'm, is Mimi coming to see you today? Huh? Is Mimi coming to see you today? Who is that? Dad's show. That is Dad's show. Very good. Don't trip over this wire. And he tripped over the wire. Ah, ah. Oh, oh, that was good balance, though, bud. We almost had a disaster, bro. If he would have face planted, oh. been a gushing geyser of tears. Chad Shanover, what's up, man? The real deal can speak a little, no doubt, dude. Let's see, Chuck Sanchez. Good morning. Call the king of college football to see if he has. A... You think old uh, Chuck Oliver may have a contact on uh, on the real deal? Let's see. Keen, please said Giles versus Georgia. Home game, man. My guess is we'll probably see more of uh, the freshman. Kyle, I have nightmares of Georgia wide receivers due to Vincent after seeing the Florida game. Anthony, Dustin, good morning. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Having a guest picker combo of Holyfield and Mike Tyson make national headlines. They could talk about the game old times near Biden. I don't know that we'd get Iron Mike. But Evander seems doable. We'll try it. We'll, I'll, I'll, we'll explore it. Terry and I will explore. We'll, 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 we'll explore. There's one other name that Terrio mentioned to me last week as a possible guest picker this week. And if that happens, gargantuan. Like, I think it might be bigger than... Holyfield. Maybe not, but in the minds of some, like, absolutely. And it's not Herschel Walker, by the way. Um, Kyle Drew would have had better defense in the last 10 years. He might have three to four more rings. Maybe so. That's fair. Wayne Ferguson, Brian Myers, Lori Profit. Good morning, y'all. David Richardson. Good morning. Uh, trivia, did Matt really say 10-2? and two? How? <laughs> Trivia, I don't think it's going to happen, but could it? Sure it could. I didn't think they were going to beat Auburn, but they did. You ask me my opinion, I picked 7-5. and five. They won one of the games I thought they'd lose, so I'll go 8-4 and four at this point. Could they lose the next three and then to A&M? Yeah, but my guess is LSU's good enough to win one of those games at home. Probably Mississippi State. That feels like the most winnable. I think they'll be a slight favorite over Mississippi State at home. And probably win that one. I think they'll lose to Georgia and Bama at home. And they'll lose at A&M on the road and finish 8-4. and four. That's my opinion. That's what I think will happen. Could they beat Georgia this weekend? Yeah. Could they beat and then beat Mississippi State? Sure. I don't think they're going to beat Bama. But could they then go on the road and beat A&M? Okay. 10-2. Don't think it's going to happen. But could it? Yeah. Travis McGraw, what's up, dude? Um... AJ said, good morning, Matt. Thoughts on putting Morrow in the slot, put another tight end to block, come off the line. I would rather one of those big receivers in the slot. I'd rather D. Anderson in the slot. I, match up a 6-6 receiver on, on, a, on a linebacker. I mean, that. I'm good with Morrow playing the role he is. F- big physical blocker. Um, you know? Release and catch and passes. Morrow caught three balls this past Saturday, but two of them got negated by penalty. One of them was the 26 yarder that would have had LSU in field goal range in the third quarter. Bad penalties, man. All right. Morning, dude, bruh. <laughs> dude, bruh. Uh, Ryan Broussard, good morning. All right. Um, let's wrap this up. I got to. Oh, just. Ew, it's already in a second. Okay, I got to go. Um, Boudreaux's Bloody Mary Mix, Margarita Mix. Thank you all for watching as always. If you have not yet, please subscribe to the Morning Scone daily email, morningscone.com. It is 100% free. There is no pop-ups. There is no spam. You're not on any mailing list. You will literally get an email from me every day at 6 a.m. Central on the dot with headlines and links and social media and blogs and blogs and things that you might find interesting to get your day started with the sports news that you care to uh, consume morningscone.com morningscone.com and if you love it please tell other people morningscone.com morningscone.com that'll be my new uh, my new theme morningscone.com morningscone.com and Boudreaux's Bloody Mary Mix Margarita Mix y'all check it out we'll see y'all today at 3 for AFR